Welcome everybody and uh, thanks for coming. My name is Yen Fen. Uh, I am president of Jibun Seattle. So we are very, very fortunate to have a Badu Rinpoche come to Seattle to teach. Uh, we're very lucky. Um, Badu Rinpoche uh, come to Seattle because Gachi Rinpoche requested Jibun Seattle to invite Badu Rinpoche to come to teach. So uh, also Badu Rinpoche and Gachi Rinpoche have a very special connection. Uh, previous Badu Rinpoche uh, is previous Gachi Rinpoche's teach. So uh, more about this information, well, the, uh, Linda will be tell us more about that. Um, first of all, somebody left this outside, so we'll leave it here. Right here. Hi, I'm, uh, my name is Linda Lee. I'm with Drew in Seattle. Um, I wanted to share some background history uh, regarding Bharatuku Rinpoche. Uh, Bharatuku Rinpoche was born in Kham in East Tibet, where he was recognized at an early age by the 16th, His Holiness the 16th Gyawa Karmapa to be the third incarnation of Tirchen Bawe Dorje, who was a Tirten. Rinpoche is recognized as Nupchen Sanji Yeshe, who is a Tirten, who was one of the five uh, main disciples of Guru Rinpoche, or Padmasambhava. Previous incarnations of Rinpoche was also Baram Dharma Wanchuk, who was the attendant of Lord Gampopa, and who later founded the Baram Kaju lineage. Baram Dharma Wanchuk eventually took rebirth as the Dharma Lord Sonam Dampo and lived at Chodrak Monastery and was later responsible for the revival of many of the secret teachings of the Baram Kaju lineage. Current Tirchen Bawe Dorje, Bharatuku Rinpoche, is the founder and spiritual head of Kunzam Pachenling, located in Red Hook, New York. Rinpoche also dedicated many, many years, 30 years of service in helping to establish Kamatriyana Dhamma Chakra, which is the main seat of His Holiness the 17th Gyalwa Karmapa. So Rinpoche has a very strong connection with the Northwest and West Coast in general. Uh, he's visited here many times and taught here over the course of 17 years. So he has many friends and students in this area. On behalf of Jikung Seattle, we are so grateful to Rinpoche to accept our invitation and to teach here. Uh, we make the heartfelt request to please turn the wheel of Dharma. Thank you. Thank you. Lambda <laughs> Um to buy his own Yavara Shenja love do so to die to Jen, the law, but not over a chicken, the name Chambe Yishin. Do so ye la conga, but the Rawa, the bed or ye shall languish on Sarai, but then Sava Lamar Moje, Dagi, you would have been there, then you are. Cutting chamber, gone ages on the coson, talking orders out of 
ตะเนลันยะดัมมะธรรมะลาหะตุเตลิกเซเนชะตังเนตาทาริกิกัปสะลาเตยุเรโบเจกะเรนลาเซยะทอลามะเทวะริเนตาริกิกัปสะลาเ
Chandeti Chona, Gombegatan, to hear get Tony, Tenny, a Toki, Samuel get Tony, Casacala Pepe, Colang out of Chambochi, John Chandet Nangi Yori, Tenita Teta will get Chale Tella, and Aranda Vojina, that in the light, you want the Jans of Chutik and Devon Davoti, then they into Casla, and on a tan so so la, I am Cora Yamneta. Nyam nyo tang. Then in Nesson Ravokaya, my ship a Kansachi Yena Yang. Then it gave us some bath, two jay, chepas of papa, some jay, two jay, monam tang. The patinata, they get the la pende lana may be get any gumba chepar gentle la, ramdik dabo, or rockan dabo, chuta paina. Then it take one a tane, yato chutik and devon dabo re. Tay in the castle at a day, Tabuketa, Boche Gombat in a chick, Count Tobe Gravatan, the Nil Henge number Matupe, Lodam, Mamboche Gerenga, and the Tobe Tad in Ruki Patachi. The Nit so young or tena, a young Matopangara in a yanta, Tela Tang, Zupo Teme de la Soba Mamboche, Nesson Davoche Langan, Nedi Govanda Voti Tap. Pape go by in a banjo and tungente, legate gitelari, canje gitene yena yanta, samba, samchi, mando was in legatoni, lutenke mamboche yova de tete in the gaps of the tari, rumboche tongue, then in the la yobege, tassia torge, de bonchuso gay, ta good in latin, then a young stop a samate, cona de la yobege shallow yena yarong. I'm making Deva Yobek and May in Ayanon. Sat the pep de pege, Kanda Tonje in Ayanon de Saint Jacqueline Tom, Tom Zomba Tom de Mazi, the ring sign in Gerengla. Taking Baba Doge, that poor mum is only Jack, the catch at the hero, she is on the corner of the cup heavy over it. The next day in the council, that day, Tavajan and Angi share, Tavi in the watch you go on it. Got a huge sort of now what you should you could have seen that go on it and the telling on us on some day or days. As um, Linda said in her introduction, uh, I was uh, sent to, to this country to uh, teach Dharma and to serve and advise uh, people uh, by the 16th Jongwon Kamapa. And for more than 30 years, I served primarily uh, at his uh, North American seat and its affiliated uh, centers. In the uh, service of and in affiliation with the monastery, uh, Rakhdul Monastery, founded by my predecessor, Techen Baba Dorje, I created an affiliated nonprofit. Uh, organization called the Rockville Foundation and affiliated with it uh, centers including did this did the sound stop or did it just get turned down can you hear it all right and affiliated with that centers including Kunzong, Apelchenling and uh, other affiliated branches as the Buddha said the only way to please Buddhas is by helping and pleasing ascension beings. The, the single intention of all the Buddha's teachings is that uh, as all beings have repeatedly been our parents, that we practice and train ourselves and teach others all for the benefit of other beings. So in short, we could say that everything the Buddha taught is how to help uh, other beings. Especially in uh, evidence of this, if we look at the activity of Gachin Rinpoche, he travels constantly all over the world without respite. He does so out of his uh, perfect and consummate 
aspiration bodhicitta and in his perfect implementation of it in the hope that he be of help and service to other beings. I therefore regard my coming here today as like a drop of water in the ocean of his uh, activity. I feel it is my responsibility and my honor to try to facilitate and uh, bring about, help to bring about the aspirations, compassionate activity, and hopes for beings of such holy beings. So in coming here, I'm trying to pour my little drop of water uh, into his ocean. I had hoped to come to Seattle for many years, but the distance, uh, my uh, being busy with other things and fluctuations in my health uh, prevented me. Now, due to the kindness of Gajan Rinpoche and Drikung Seattle, I'm able to come to uh, see again uh, longtime Dharma friends and students as well as uh, new students and those of you who are coming here uh, for the first time. I've been asked to teach a song from the Treasury of Eloquence. Uh, I will do my best to do so, and please do your best to listen. <laughs> ดอกจะเหยดังเต็มหมู่สิงเกตสมยวาริดอกจะเหยดังเต็มหมู่สมเตหนดวาริจะเบเชตละช่วยปมบเยติเยตงสงยวาริยาเชยิงทางมาวัน
เป็นน่ะน้ําทาเกลเลขาโกดาวจิเป็นน่ะทํานาเดเปกน้ําทาติตะจิเปยยังสะโอเคโกดาวจิกาลันสโนกุยอดิเจดาวจิชวายนะน
and apathy. And it was in order to tame uh, these three kleshas and all of their uh, varieties that he taught uh, 84,000 aggregates of uh, Dharma. Which means that while the purpose of Dharma is, in a sense, uh, quite simple, uh, the scope of Dharma is tremendously vast. Especially now, in this 21st century, when we are all uh, so terribly busy and also very distracted, we lack the time or practical opportunity to study, let alone practice, all of the Buddha's teachings. Nevertheless, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are extremely resourceful in finding ways to help beings in situations like our own. At the same time, however, we uh, are uh, very, very active. We are constantly acting with our bodies, our speech, and our minds. Uh, in fact, we've always been this way. When we are active in a positive way, this leads to a higher rebirth. When we are active in a negative way, this leads to a lower rebirth. But in any case, all of our activity means that samsara, which has been going on without beginning, throughout beginningless time, is not of itself ever going to end. We can, however, bring it to an end. But in order to do that, we need to practice Dharma. The principal function of which is to enable us to reveal or discover our innate wisdom, our Buddha nature, our true being. All Dharma teachings are concerned with helping us to do that. And this includes such uh, types of teaching as biographies, collections of realization songs, pithy or concise instructions, and so on. However, the degree to which uh, such teachings actually help us depends as much on our own attitude, our own degree of receptivity, as it does on the teachings themselves. Probably, as an example of this, I should use the most famous uh, biography and collection of songs, which is that, those of Jetsun Milarepa. The purpose of studying the life and songs of Milarepa is that uh, through responding to them with faith and inspiration, uh, we be uh, blessed by them and actually encouraged by Milarepa's example and his teachings to emulate him. However, a problem uh, can arise, and this problem stems from a kind of uh, presupposition or small-mindedness that can happen within us. We might study the life of Milarepa and reflecting upon it think, surely he was one of the greatest gurus who has ever appeared in the Buddhist tradition. But he had to go through so much hardship and practice under conditions of such extreme austerity without even sufficient food to eat and so on. This is something I could never do. In fact, I have no interest in doing it. In other words, 
we allow ourselves to retreat from the message of the Dharma by reacting with a sense that it has no relevance to our lives. And in that way, we create an unnecessary, indeed an artificial distance between ourselves and the Dhamma. But that's not the purpose of biographies or collections of realization songs. The purpose is that we be moved by them. And being moved by them, that we be inspired. Key, however, to being moved and inspired in the right way is courage. We have to have, in approaching such things, the courage of thinking, if I cannot surpass this teacher in his or her realization and style of practice, at least I must try to equal them. And if we respond to these teachings with such courage, such positive inspiration, then we will receive their blessing. So this is actually the principal purpose of studying the lives and songs of historical masters. With regard to the songs of Terchimbabwe Dorje, personally, I don't feel capable of fully explaining their uh, profound meaning, but I promise to do my best uh, to explain uh, the words of this song. In listening to this explanation and in reading and studying this song, please do so with an altruistic attitude. Rather than thinking, I am doing this for my own benefit, think, I am doing this so that I may become able to help all other beings. When we study or practice Dharma with that motivation, it becomes an authentic cause of that very ability, because it strengthens both our aspiration and our implementation bodhicitta, and will ultimately lead to the, our discovery of absolute bodhicitta, and through that revelation, our ability to equal each of us the aspirations and activity of all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So please uh, respond to this uh, song with courage. ลับเดนดอนเดมบาอะมันดวาเอเวนเบเนโซยุกะโซยอเรเทนโซเทนซียิงเปวาสตะเตจิงคอนเกชาลับดันอะมันดะมันโบยอบาดิทาวายอบ
เทตาวุลามาทัสโลาชาสันเทวาริสนาทัคงลามามังบูจิตเองเดียบาลีตัดยินดูกาสุลาตัดโตเชปัตโตพับเกลามาเจกเดตัดเองชงเกลิงบาลีเดียร์โอ้เช่นดาวกิตาเกี่ยวกับธรรมะมโมจิตเองยบัจจลตินเนี่ยเชื่อรับคนดูสตัดเชื่อรับเดชสัมจิมัยมปะเกี่ยวกับนิเกี่ยวกับเชื่อรับนิเชื่อรับคนดูจันทร์ขวัญเป็นสตัดกัดิเชิมบุสโสลนั่งยาบะกัดิเชิมบุสโสลนั่งยาบะเกี่ยวทะเลนดาวเจลาเจนิพิวกวายนะทุนนำเดียร์ขวัญเมียปะเซเนสวาเดตักการีเขียบอกการีดูเซนะเซเนขวัญขวัญเนี่ยนี่ยันทับกุลามละทับรีเบกีทิ้งเทเลเขียบตุนพับปะเจตัสเจกันนายเมียเบกีอยู่เทเลตินตัดเจตับกีการีเขียบอกที่สุสลาทับลามาเจลตินช่วยเบชนะเซเนขวัญเมียปะตังขวัญเมียเบกีทับลามาเจตับ अच्छे युवते नमः स्वान्देव सोसिन स्वारे रांडों पाने ये पे यो लंग पे यातं तेसे नमः हिंदू ताजवाज जोपुसांगी क्यों नहीं देता ते ये से तासा तांचुवाने तंबोला फादु युवते बेक चांचु सिमानम तं 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 चोग के वजन बेक ट्रुपे को ना बाका ये मते समझे ते तं वो के वाले यों बेक काफ़ ने पर रंग तं दला तारी ने शेपत पापे के ये राजीन चिक पंजोल चीन चिक चंदे जोगे ये सब बेक कोम्बायो मारे तं वो ने के वाले यों बेक काफ़ ला तासिम चीन तं चे ला पहले लाना में बाय यां तापा चिक Jogo gombe gomba cekki Pena ta chene tommin dozong zi Sene ta yu la mena na song yo bari Se yendu kao so la rano la chuko on de chur Yendu la zuk yin ki toni Drobe ki ton zi yombe kao so la Sene ran shu ke ran ki ton de Yung su zo pa som ji por Ran ki lunga yi sam na kangi da zonga kane da wo chi yo ba yin na yam ते मज़ून डॉवर नाम के तात यूँ में समझे समझे कि तां दला चेत सीने जिन्द पैगों के कांजा ये वो छोटे जो बच्चे ला जिन्द तां करांगों ने समझे कि डॉवर जब एक ठेले यूँ से जब जो देवाचे योरी जो देवाचे ला जिन्द राशु के ठेले देला यूँ जिन्द घरां के समझे दगा समझे कि तां दलंगे ठेले � देते मातो चेक में सांब चले कि दुखी डबोच ने यो मारे कला जो हम संग डेबो चलते हैं राशु के नौका ने निमा शाना तो ने सांब के साथा सोप के ने करे ये बात यों से जो बात हम के थे चुचे दोला करा साथ डबा शार निमा शार यों तो काफ़ सुला तो यों से जो बात हम के थे करा राशि के करा शार डबा डबोच रे मातो ता Korang sampai ke nela syar, sampai ke nela mesyar sampai ke lembah dawo je. Ni malam ni pada yang dua lah, ni yang dua tu, kalau tu mesti kau ni, tu ni dua tu, kau sungguh yoje tule ke dua tu tu lagi, ke yang dua tu tu ni ke lagi dawo kau vali. Rando tu ni yang tu, ni orang pe start je tu, yang tu orang jawa tu kau ni nampi kita korang. Tetapi yang senaya itu, dorong senaya itu, kita bela, tapi kalau lawan DPK, jual tang, kita jawab dengan sanji jam je tu, enam tang. Tapi sekarang tu sembala, sebab kita tuan tu, kalau sejuk DPK, mana tuan ni kira betul DPK, kita enam lah, ini tu senaya semua tuan. Yang tu, nampu nampu cerdik pe, kalau sama sama kita. Jadi, yang cung najur nampi cerdik pe, kalau sama sama jadi, kalau tak kau coba cari solu, dua tu cung je hendak ni berjaya, tak so so, kena tak kena yang cung dah wujud so, tak ni le cung dah wujud kau ni tak. Rito Embala Tene 
ตาเนี่ยเนี่ยสอยเกินจนสอบเกยยังช่วงนั้นจึงปะนําเกยตาช่วยยังตาปะนี่ชื่อปะนะขาช่วยดาวจึงมาอินเดโซนี่ตาท
by root words. Of key uh, importance in this line is the uh, phrase, in all my lives. This means that uh, Techon Bhavya Dorje's gurus, and we are to infer from this our own as well, are not simply our gurus in this life, but our gurus who have been as kind to us in guiding us as they are in this life, in previous lives, and will, uh, if we are fortunate, uh, in future lives as well. Now, what is this kindness that is beyond repayment? This goes to the very heart of what a guru really is. A guru is somebody who does for you what no one else has ever done or will do, what no one else can or could do, which is that they guide you out of samsara. They guide you from delusion to a state free from delusion. And that type of kindness is beyond any kind of repayment. So therefore, he says, I pray to you, my root gurus. In the second part of this first stanza, he addresses all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, calling them victors, those who have won, and their children. Bodhisattvas are called the male and female children of the Buddha's mind. You've given up your own good in undertaking others' good. This refers to, first of all, the uh, generation of bodhicitta, which begins the path, taught by any Buddha or Bodhisattva. Uh, then, secondly, their pursuit of that path, and then, finally, uh, their uh, resulting achievement and activity. No one who has achieved the state of a Bodhisattva, let alone that of a Buddha, has ever done it um, for their for themselves. Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, when they first generate bodhicitta, the intention to achieve perfect Buddhahood for the benefit of others, do not generate it by thinking, I want to become a Bodhisattva and then a Buddha so I can be really, really famous and get lots and lots of money. You cannot achieve awakening through any kind of selfish or personal ambition. The only way that awakening can be achieved is by wishing to achieve it in order to be able to help all other beings. And it is as a result of this initial and ongoing motivation that Buddhas, upon their Buddhahood, begin and continue endlessly to exhibit what in the Uttara Tantra Shastra is called by the Bodhisattva Maitreya the non-conceptual and effortless benefiting of beings. Because a Buddha or Bodhisattva's initial motivation at the outset of their path and ongoing motivation throughout their uh, pursuit of the path is the wish to benefit others and is free from any concern about themselves. When they achieve perfect awakening, which is the perfect good for themselves, even though they have not sought it, because it is the casting aside once and for all of the terrible burden of delusion under which we all uh, suffer. As soon as they achieve that, as a result of their initial and continuous motivation, they begin to spontaneously, effortlessly, thoughtlessly benefit others. Because their motivation was unlimited, because they didn't generate bodhicitta by thinking, I want to achieve Buddhahood so I can benefit this many beings, or these beings, but not those beings. 
because it was impartial and unlimited. As a result, their ensuing activity, the activity which ensues upon their Buddhahood, is equally impartial and unlimited. Rather than being choosy and judgmental, the activity of a Buddha is in fact non-conceptual responsiveness. It is, for example, like the way the sun functions. When the sun's light shines on the world, it shines on everything. It doesn't pick and choose. It doesn't judge. It doesn't think, I'm going to shine on this place because it's clean, but not on that place because it's muddy or dirty. The sun just shines. So in the same way, because of the initial unselfish bodhicitta of every bodhisattva and Buddha, their activity while bodhisattvas and especially after Buddhahood is utterly impartial, non-conceptual, responsive, and devoid of judgment. So therefore, Techen Bawe Dorje pays homage to that and says, you've given up your own good in undertaking others' good. I bow from my heart to you, victors, and your children. The second stanza uh, is an introduction to the song in which he explains what he is going to uh, teach and instructs uh, the listener, the initial uh, person, Karmadula, the initial audience, and by extension all who hear or, or study it. Listen to this brief explanation of the three wheels of view, meditation, and conduct for a humble yogin who has generated the benevolent intention to practice dharma. Brief explanation means that um, what he is going to describe here, he is going to describe or explain briefly in as a summary, but that were it expanded upon, uh, it could uh, become extremely uh, vast and extensive. By using the term three wheels here to describe view, meditation, and conduct or behavior, Tejan Bawidorje makes reference uh, to a more common use of this term three wheels, which refers to uh, freedom from reification of the three aspects of any uh, action or interchange. By making this um, reference, he makes it clear that therefore he's going to be talking about a non-conceptual or reification-free uh, view, meditation, and conduct. For whom is he writing this? For a humble yogin. A humble yogin means that a person who is sincerely trying to practice Dharma to the best of their ability. Especially the idea of Amadobas being humble or uh, having humility means that, as put traditionally, he has cast aside human things and taken up divine things. He has cast, that means he has cast aside all concern with social position, wealth, influence, and so on. The things that we largely regard as bulwarks or supports of our human lives and exchange them for divine things, for seeking the state of authentic and undiluted liberation. So therefore, he is a humble yogin who has generated the benevolent intention to practice Dharma. The intention to practice Dharma, but it is a benevolent intention. It is not simply for his own uh, well-being or his own good, but for the good of others. Mm-hmm. 
Sen
Penan Dumada was the Chorang Semla Yoba Yina Yang, Penna Papa Yigi Tayo River, Ugo Wonjo Niji Lopal, Second Kalan, then Mother Chase. That's doing it. That's on the layer. That's better than the song body. Penna Stop Kora send it. No, my long tapa let you chubble the jam dana. And then I ran so the messes again. で、さんで、ちょっとだわけ。だからね、たねがらそげ、よべけんとしんだわけ、よでて。でね、せんでらそ、さんもたまにな、しんでね、じゃ、のぱんまま。あ、ちょいちょっとだわけでてよれ。ス
Oh, hi, I didn't see you. Uh, then we come to the third stanza. Uh, and the, where's the Chinese translator? Did you go straight from the Tibetan, or did you go from my English when you translated? Okay, because I the one line, well, two lines here are completely wrong. So you'll be the first to hear the corrected versions. So, because I did this a long time before Rinpoche taught it, you know, I was asked to translate it, so I did my best, and sometimes my best was no good. So, um, before we get to Rinpoche's explanation, uh, if you're using a text, then change whatever happens from now on in this life. Some Samsaric endeavors will never come to an end. It, to all we have done up to now in this life. That's the first one. So, all we have done up to now in this life. I misinterpreted up to now as henceforward or from now on. So all we have done up to now in this life, that's the first line. And the second line will be shorter, it will be easier. Has been before samsaric endeavors, and then cross out the S. So it has been samsaric endeavor without end. So cross out the S and get rid of will never come to end. So the first two lines read, All we have done up to now in this life has been samsaric endeavor without end. Okay. So, um, okay, now Rinpoche's explanation. So, did everyone get that? So, you can follow the text. And if you didn't get it, you can come to me in between. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last. Um, in the second stanza, Tejimba uh, Dorje addresses. Um, the attitude that we need to have toward the course of our lives in beginning to practice. And um, in the first two lines, he says, all we have done up to now in this life has been samsara endeavor without end. Which means that everything we have done up to the point where we start to really uh, practice Dharma has not worked. It's It's been a failure. We have tried, fundamentally, all we have done, we have done for one reason. We've tried to be happy. And in order to be happy, we've tried to acquire, create, or somehow manipulate the things that we thought would make us happy. And Embedded in that hope, that pointless hope, is the notion that at some point we will reach a critical mass of happiness where all the effort will stop. So all our lives we've been living for some hypothetical future moment at which point we will have succeeded, we will have enough and we will be able to relax and enjoy the fruits of all of our sacrifice and hard work. The problem is it doesn't work that way. As we have tried so hard to find happiness using whatever means we have selected, in, a, in competing with competitors, or to put it bluntly, in attempting to defeat or destroy our enemies, because that's what competitors are, we have only created more enemies. All of our competition has led to more competition. All of our strife with enemies has only led to more enemies. And it's an endless process. There's no point at which, through attempting to destroy your enemies, you're actually going to stop having enemies. Also, in attempting to protect others, not in a selfless way, but those who are useful to us, we've attempted to support and protect those who've become 
uh, bulwarks of our own uh, efforts, self-esteem, self-obsession. So in short, all of our efforts to protect our retainers have been unsuccessful because the more you attempt to protect or favor your retainers, those useful to you, the more retainers you have to protect. And that's also endless. That, will, that can't come to an end. Well, at this point, we're out of ideas. He says in the third line, we are blind, stunned, out of ideas. We're blind in the sense that we can't see our way forward. We don't know where to go from here. We've taken this path. We made a choice at some point in our lives, in the beginning, and we're starting to figure out that it's a dead end. We can't see our way forward. We're stunned because it never occurred to us that it wouldn't work. It never occurred to us that you can't reach a critical mass of success and then really be perfectly happy. And we're out of ideas. We simply don't know what to do now. So since at some point we have to admit, if we're honest, that we cannot figure out what to do. We've been unable to achieve the happiness which we thought we were going to achieve. He says, don't you regret the mistake we made in the beginning? Don't you regret the decision to try to, to, try to achieve happiness through manipulating the external world? So, in the next stanza, which doesn't require uh, alteration, more or less, um, he deals with the, the issue that, that, that arises next. So, at some point, we may have ad admitted to ourselves that what we've been trying to do won't and can't work. But then we still have the problem of habit, and especially the habit of procrastination. He says, although you now think in your heart, I must definitely accomplish dharma that will help later, you are uncertain how long you have left to live. When we come to the conclusion, the inescapable conclusion, that um, samsara doesn't work, that it's endless and endlessly unsatisfactory, then we naturally decide, well, I must definitely practice dharma. I'll try something else. The problem is that we usually only come to that conclusion when at least half our possible lifespan is gone. And so we now think, well, I better practice dharma. But we don't know how long we have left to live. As one of the great Indian masters, possibly Vasubandhu, um, she said, said, if you think about it, it's amazing that we keep breathing throughout the night and wake up the next morning. Because if we fail to take one in-breath, that would be it. Personally, I suffer, I suffer from sleep apnea, so I can actually, <laughs> I can verify this. <laughs> you know, we regard our lives as um, little spheres of iron, so tough. And we think of our lives as stable things. But in fact, they're much more like bubbles on the surface of water. Human life happens. You know, it, it bubbles up on the surface of the world, and then the bubble bursts. But human life is not a little iron ball. It's a bubble. Bubbles happen. If you look at, at a river or something, you'll see bubbles. 
but they don't last. And human life is as fragile and in the long term as brief as a bubble. The next line he says, oh, oh, these, this precious leisure and resources. A leisure refers to uh, freedom from the eight uh, states without leisure. Resources refers to the five intrinsic and five extrinsic resources. These are the things that make up this precious human existence. And these are uh, expanded uh, in detail in all of the uh, teachings on the preliminary practices, especially the four thoughts that turn the mind. And much of the uh, first thought, the rarity of acquisition of this leisure and these resources, uh, is an explanation of uh, what the causes for these are. And since those causes are extremely rare, uh, how rare and statistically unlikely uh, this situation is. But still, and we know this, we've heard this, and we know that eventually we're going to die, and after our death we're going to be in the bardo, and the only thing that is going to help us then is the good we've done and the dharma we've practiced. And yet, he says, although we know better, we are mindlessly distracted. The we who know better means people who are exposed to Dharma, people who have heard uh, it said, who've heard teachings on precious human existence, and death and impermanence, and so on. For example, Ramche said, Terchen Bhavi Dorji was writing this in the context of a Tibetan society where every Tibetan has heard about these things. So Tibetans and people who, other people who've uh, heard these things should know better. We should know better than to think that we're going to remain alive for a long time. But we're mindlessly distracted. We think yeah, yeah, I'm going to die, but probably not now. Probably die later. You know, Or we think, yeah, I'll practice Dharma, but I'll get to it eventually. And the problem with that, of course, is that um, it's quite likely that we will die before that later uh, ever comes. So he says, don't you regret having wasted your life? If we were to die today or tonight, how much of what we had done throughout our lives would uh, cause us satisfaction? And how much of it would we have uh, to regret? How much good have we actually done and how much ill? Kalapa, <laughs> ก็เลยตั้งเงินไปขอได้ทานเนี่ยทานเนี่ยเอ่อรานังเอ่อรานังตานเนี่ยรานังเอ่อสมรตองเนี่ยสมรตาเนี่ยรานังเอ่อราน
Dunghatinjongi Vanda was a lady or a tea in Ducasola Ranji, ten day, somewhat take a tack, Coran Chat, Thomas, Junior Mopa Jota Jeba, some jet, the pang, there was Lana Mepayanta, but Shermatop, the double Sanje, come on top of the Bachilla, ten days in the Coco de Matoti, and I can't quiet your matters. That our Randa Jin Nicati. Then the devil and Gubbeke, Lodge Yobayina, Ryan Tamjay Tabat, the Tamjay Jibber, Kama Tabar Jibatan, Jim Simjay Tamjay Jang, Tabat Tamjay Jibber, Kama Gobber Jibber, Lodge Yobajay Yena, Lodong Yamanda, the Bangladin, the Dalog Topa, Nekab Nekab the Chun that you do, Nekab Nekab the Pangotong, the Tons and Double, Chi, that day and you didn't shoot it down. Devic Goni, when I church you got chicken yoba, Yenda Chilla and Taggy Yoba, Panjur Chilla and Taggy Yoba, or ten I yank it up, par roach, Jenna, so Jay Jungari, some begin to shake you like a Taggy Yoba gets out low tea, log top of Jetta, lot on Yambaris, Jetta with the log top and Yambati, one week to sort of Tobaris, Kobe, Lessang and by shortening, Kobe Lakala. Then it tongue in big chavacari, yoba to tom jete, your rembic to so to what is. Down the rana, some lo, down the names, that one, tanneg that to so canakas and rosado. Tap at the tom jim, but come on, one topic, Joshi, Mado Jake, then it is chujet, dandon yang and the malas of Bayonso, Zoba some jip on it. Tang on a tanning lo yang, tapa jetin, choose and draw some to Mazi Bajeke, Teto can double lana me, but tapa jeggy, some begay tenny, so you get lost under what you gain, some not a town, him begay to sort of talk their bodies. In but tumble like you, terrain, that yet I was some not tanny, tan tatu, one a tanning, tacora, tapena. Nam she lose a tarbic cup senayon, she will get cup senayon. That tetabula, could you yop a gay tan devon double the candy senna? Tumbeg a slacho, the latta yanta by the dub tapa in a tamba says sun is on day. Some melovacilla seriodi. You think church it and devil get that show candace dupa in a young Saint Yandala Pengari. Jopanjola Pengari, Top Cordella Pengari, that's on the Dandun Yang Chawalas or what some yellow Pengari, and I young young topic in Yimbo, then you are me big tumble such a tip, then it tell a tin is done in Duju Yawanda, which is our in the Rayo Maris, the young to in the capsula, Yimbo tumble such a young Tabachi La Sol, said to me under one. Terse na yun, samlo si kito tayo ang dawo de karchamores. Reta, ha si ko? Reta when ha? Kita may kaya ba? Ha si? Kaya kaya nito. Reta beta. Reta. Reta de a de. Kita. Reta de na kita. เลิกเลยครับเวทาคิดว่าไม่เกี่ยวจังอ๋อจ้าคนนั้นเขาเสียจิตถ้าเราบอกจิตแล้วถ้าเธอส่งเราบอกจีนนะส่งเราเหมือ
ซงกับสุรชุบิยอดิเตตาบะชินเดดุบิกิสุติตากะจุทโตคุมะซัมเจเกเตนิยาเตบะริสทานเนรสุรคุกะนิมโดริตาจุเนเตตาบะลาเต
into believing that samsara will work, into um, forgetting the fact that we know deep down it never will. And we allow ourselves, because it's, it's easier to go with the flow of society, to believe in this procrastination and denial uh, to which we have and others do as well uh, devoted our lives. It's time for us to, think, to start thinking for ourselves and to resolve once and for all that samsara is pointless. It's not going to work. Any effort that we uh, put into it is uh, not going to uh, bring any significant return. It is time to focus on the essence, holy norma. Essence means something that has a real point to it, something that can bear fruit. In comparison, in comparison, samsara is like a husk without a nut or fruit inside it. Essence means something we can do in this life that will give us something good to take with us after our death. All the things to which we normally devote our lives, pleasure, fame, fun, wealth, distraction, entertainment, society, all these things will vanish in an instant as soon as we die. The only things that we will take with us are the imprints and effect on us of good deeds and dharma practice. So these other things are very, very temporary. They will not accompany us. They will not help us. Whereas the benefit, the imprint, the effect on us of dharma practice and good deeds, these are unchanging. These will accompany us uh, after our death. So therefore, he says, it's time to focus on the essence, on what actually works, what will bear fruit. In the next stanza, he talks about the um, benefit of the lifestyle that Karma Dulva has chosen, which is practicing in solitude, in isolation. But he begins with a caution. He says, Isolation will not hide you from death. We should not fool ourselves into thinking that if we behave like good boys and girls and practice dharma, that we don't have to worry about impermanence anymore. It's all taken care of. Even living in isolation, in, solid, in solitude, does not guarantee that you're not going to die at any moment. So isolation will not hide us from death. Well, what will it do? It will, however, enable you to give up negative distraction. The value of creating a venue or, or situation appropriate for practice, whether it be the situation of complete isolation that Karma Dulva chose, or something else, the value of such a venue, such an environment, is to enable us to, at least temporarily, give up negative distractions that prevent us from practicing and studying Dharma. Our forebears, our kaju predecessors, the great masters of our tradition, have taught us to accomplish Dharma in retreat. It is time for you to live in mountain caves. So here he is encouraging Karma Dulva to continue uh, to live uh, the way he has been living in isolated retreat. And then um, he talks about that really covers external isolation. But um, there's also the issue of what your mind is concerned with, internal solitude or isolation, mental solitude. 
And we, even though we may be practicing Dharma, we may be living in a situation of isolation, we need to make sure that our minds are isolated from worldly ambition and not just our bodies. So he continues, Subduing enemies and favoring friends are the tethers that pull us down into bad migrations. Effort in competition and favoritism, nepotism, whatever it is, which are the things that really make up most of our lives and can even affect us if we think we are living a spiritual or religious life. These things are like uh, tethers or chains attached to anchors that will pull us down into lower rebirths. It would be better for you now to subdue your five poisons. We all have an innate tendency to be um, what here is like a tough guy. We want to be self-reliant. We want to be successful. We want to be we don't want to be victims. We want to be uh, survivors. And that can make us aggressive, it makes us want to overcome something, fight something, subdue something. Well, what we need to subdue is not something external to ourselves. It is our own attachment, aversion, apathy, arrogance, and jealousy. Gaining fame through ill deeds is a never-ending occupation. If you uh, try to become famous, the only way to become famous, by and large, involves some kind of uh, manipulation and uh, effort, which means that at some point, even if it doesn't begin that way, it's going to turn very, very negative. But then once you've gained your 15 minutes of fame, then you have to try to maintain it, which involves deceitfulness and further manipulation and so on. So fame, even if it's fame for being in retreat or whatever it is, uh, is pointless. It's any concern with fame or reputation is instantaneous corruption. So what is this all? We all want to be tough. We all want to be survivors. What is a real... Um, I don't know a non-gender specific uh, verb for, uh, I mean, noun for tough guy, tough person. We all want to be tough, tough people. If you subdue ignorant self-fixation, you're truly tough. Ignorant self-fixation means selfishness. The one thing that we have, that we can't seem to, to overcome is our own selfishness. And if we can overcome that, that is a, a real, a really a tough person. That is a real hero. Somebody who overcomes their own selfishness. Now, what Terchen Bauri Dorje is doing in this stanza, which is in the, in the uh, printout is divided into the uh, two pages. Actually, there are no real stanzas in this song. We divided them because People don't like it if you print a book in English and there's no breaks, then they won't read it. There's several things we discovered. They won't read footnotes. They have to go on. They won't read them at the end. They won't read end notes. But they read side notes. So we, now we do side notes. Um, and the other thing is, if there are no breaks, um, then people won't read it. They want their books. If you look at books now, the paragraphs are like two sentences, you know, and it's like, the chapter is like one page, and then there's a blank page, and then the next chapter starts. <laughs> so you really have to give people space to rest their eyes. Um, but actually, there are no breaks in the song itself in the Tibetan, so the breaks are largely chosen based on trying to guess the groups of meaning. So it continues, really, that same stanza after you're truly tough into the next page. And what he's doing here is he's... Terchen Bore Dorje is listing things that we all want to be. We're all wannabes. What do we want to be? We want to be tough. We want to be smart. We want to be classy. We want to be learned. These are the things we want to be. Nobody wants to be seen as weak, dumb, vulgar, 
and ignorant. We all want to be, now we may define it differently. We may define it in a Buddhist way. We may define it in a, in a mundane way. But we're all wannabes. So he said, well, if you want to be, here's how to be. If you want to be a tough guy, overcome your selfishness. Because that's tough. Most people don't do that. You want to be smart? Do this. If you've no craving for these appearances, you're truly smart. Being smart or intelligent does not consist of the accumulation of knowledge. It consists of seeing through the seduction of our projections. How we view the world. Our own projections. These appearances. Being classy doesn't mean, you know, I mean, in that society it would probably be having a nice horse, driving the right car. If you accomplish the ground of others' benefit, you're truly classy. What is the ground of others' benefit? Taming yourself so that you can actually be of real use to others. That's class. If you give up malevolence, you're truly learned. Learning or scholarship or erudition does not consist of degrees or accumulated knowledge, but it, it, it consists of having learned the one thing which we need to learn, which is that selfishness and malevolence uh, have to be let go of. And so he says, if you want unmistaken success, real success, success not simply of this life, Cultivate holy dharma. That's all. It takes the tanger, come by Shabanto, near the Madan Chiwa Tembarki, some the gym decor, come and local joke, Yiva Hova, Mel do you zip, de le tando, naming Hava Pong, to some Sanje Kundu Lamala. Yap sol tukin tay debjante, tukin dokir, lang yedota, gosum domi kupi chopa, consigo gosum gosum gos gosum dogun chopa, domi pol star. ペナタチェクトスタタボダボチャワイナタンジョンニャカシェパンゾスタティガナソコニマボシュサワリタバチェダンジョワチョサンブキムルンボチェンデシェドネジャコンバチェテンデコナタチェガサオタンジョンセン
Quindi, giunte a te, cari, ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti avvai in aia, io te da un po' che non ti ti ho detto che 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 ti ho detto non è ha cone, te ha coatam de mazi, semne la patam de mazi, non è che te ta ve che te ni cora sova da bo semiola io bati che da che carica bore is. Dele tando, non in chava pon, sta tele, che ti che te ta ve che nana zimogova, te ni tele tawa da pe che cora logi mato che che te ni ta te ta ve che se che se che la non in che con il lindo va te ta ve che chava. Paya di Shira ke tini karcham bori is. Tio sum sanjay kundu lama la sata de maung tata tio sum ke sanjay tam je te yonsu dope ke tuje chana tam je yonsu dupe ke danyi rida chinkhur jantu ki chata sose ke sawa lama te la tini chapsu sova tang tige tuje ke nto ye tini raang ke lunga ye sum ke dipa Dipata Dipa Kanyo Bata Tamjete Yaman Zedu Sol Sambike Sondep Tang Tso Chimbo Zopar Chabe Chedo La Tene Lue Lang Yito Tang Tso Chimbo Zopar Chabe Chedo La Tene Ngosin Jobin Chobata Yijik Tobin Chobata Dabo Zongin Chobata Dabo Mazongin Chobala Subata Mangbo Pena Chonjong Nala Song Yowati Teta Vike Ta Ngonjir Yito Kin Chobak Kanyo Ba Prova Tang Gosam Dukhu Chopa Tome Pol Sarangil Lunga Yisam Tan Dersnami Ngopik Yudoku Kaan Yopa Tessam Jekin Chopa Padame Pa Pol Sarang Dela Sashej Shokoku Yoh Ndok Karin Ndok Senna Ta Gosam Dukhu Chopa Tome Pol Sengkin Dabo Dela Samlo Tawa Yena Ta Tereng Khasang Tisong Dabo Chila Yena Tene ngone tane ka, ah, ta lama sengke nte chan cha, mandik dewan da wo. Lama sengke nte, kanga te la, shetha kukur jane, ya gowan da wo. Lama sengke nte la, puju yana mena yung sita wo, tam je te te la pu gowan da wo. Ngara ta ni lu mo gowan da wo. De khe tha wo ndo, ah, gombe ke, goma da wo. Yung sengke nte, stende sende yore is, yore te ina yang. Dogu ke chopa sengke te la te ne yong se dogwa tham je te kora kaya meba zon pe ma ya na mandik panda wo tawa nye ni mari sta tanda de la song wa ta wo la sokin zo ke le lan yi dor tang song song wa ngone ke so su ke ngone yop a ye na yang yop e ke panjol kaya yin me ke to ni so su ke Lama le chik ta chik chopa puna yin dikere te mepe kang za chik yin a yin ta ngala kang yon ma di sonom ke sokin sao pe ke tam da wo kang yon yon ma di sambe ke guo ni lu go gu yon ma di te ni sem jing gu jang ma to pa jawa ji pe tap ji mei se ni song a di chan shok gu sem rumbo chik namba nyin te sori kien to la te ni chon jok ni song a ta to la nyam son lang Tene rinbe jindu chanjo ke sem dabo te chi ba tam je chewa yina yang. Tene pe na chanjo sem je chyo na ke che ke kobe tona tambe nyam ta na. De shik nam ju se che jyo cha shin jitin hamir che pe cha cha ni juru son yu wadi. Chanjo sem je sanam ka ka tin de la zong che na nam ka ka ni kong ka ni ten ni te wish lakwan juru son yu wadi. Ta tundo yong se dabo tam je te douto che ni fui kya pu ki cho pa kaya wadi. Sanam ke so ta nang khan le kang wang ta wo ten den jung ke yo de. Te ta be ke go ni sam lo ta ni ten ni sanam ke so sa ba lo tap che ba tu pa pa yo de. Ka se pu me wang ke ke kang sa yin na ya. Rang ke lo yi go ni cha, nga ke go ni ntang ba, ye ji go ni sandep tundo yin na kang yin pu kumar wa. 
Pukum mare te ena ya tako ne, ta ne ge lasam nombar ta pe goni, te pato mugu chepar ki, te ge yope ge goni, ta te ta wu chepa yina, te ta wu ge jyo te la te ne, la me te la te ne jyuku yori, pe na te pa me pe manu na ka pe chun me che te, sao me se pa le nyuku huan pa che ki no, sao wa di, ta che na ke mbom cha mang po ji pu te ge yo na yang, te ne sem te la te pa me, Pangyo te la kona shudo ta ni mebe ki to ni Bumta mambo ji pyo te la ya Gomo ji pyo be ki sonam si yung ma ri si Ta chana na ngon ne ta ne ki lama te la te pa yo Mugun yo Yo pa ta te la tiyo sum ki sanje tam je ki Rangin te so si ki ta pa lama te yin sam pe ki ndushe yo Ndushe yo pa te la te ne ngon ne ki te pa che par che in ji ki zhe ne Sonde lama jambo nda woji kona ngone tane ke ta kona kona sem nyurtho pa nda woji sosu ke samano tawa yina ndamba yina tela tembe ke ngone ta chenlap che kona rangjin ke sosu sem jyo la hyogi hongkere mato che ke tene che ke dodo che ne te gowa nda woji che ke dodo che ne leen gowa nda woji tene ghaen yo mare yusi te yindu kapsu la ta te ta be gone tu sam hyegi re mato Tereng katan tuso la ta kona doku pur se yungwa ka so lama kona ki gose kan ki kona fiyun ruksan tu singi sambun duhye dawa ma to yang te se yang ta pa jye tuya la kale tuk sin dua ase. Then in the uh, next section, starting with the stanza, First Know the Rarity, the uh, Terchen Bawe Dorje begins to go through the actual uh, stages of the path in a more or less um, a practical uh, order. So the, the first stanza, starting from first up to nest of snakes, um, deals with what we would commonly call the common preliminaries. And then the next stanza, your guru, uh, up to all you possess, uh, deals with the beginning of the uncommon preliminaries, which is followed uh, in the future stanzas. To start with the first of these, the first line uh, in that first stanza says, first know the rarity of leisure and resources. As before, a leisure refers to uh, freedom from the eight states without leisure, the eight unrestful states. And resources refers to possession of the five uh, intrinsic or personal resources and the five extrinsic uh, or uh, social resources. The point of this uh, contemplation the first of the four uh, common preliminaries, is to, co is to come to an understanding or knowledge, uh, first of all, of the fact that uh, we possess a tremendously valuable opportunity. And secondly, that it is not accidental. It is not the case that we happen to just, by chance, be born with or acquire the freedom and resources that we presently enjoy. So rarity, the concept of rarity here, involves very much the idea of causation. Understanding that we have what we have because of actions performed and aspirations made by us in previous lives. The problem with this contemplation, however, Ramche said is that most of the people who carry this stuff in their mouths, you know, who can list the eight unrestful states and love to talk about them and the ten, the ten resources and so on, and who repeat these things and expect others to memorize them, don't actually think about the import of what they're saying. It becomes a mere list, something to memorize and to be proud of having memorized, but it doesn't actually penetrate their hearts. Because if you really know the rarity of these leisure and resources, you will live and act and speak in such a way as to uh, acquire them again 
in the future. If you don't, it means that either you don't really know about them or you don't really believe in them. So the function of this is to give us the confidence to pursue the path and the recognition uh, that uh, we have a unique opportunity to do so. He continues, second, remember impermanence and death. The second of the, of the four common preliminaries is a contemplation of impermanence and death. And this ensues upon the first because while we do have a precious, unique opportunity, it's not going to last very long. So the recollection of impermanence and death, the recollection of the fact that the life and death are separated by a single breath is in order that we overcome laziness, in order that we overcome procrastination. He continues, third, don't mistake the results of actions. It's important that in order to make choices in our lives, we recognize that the results of actions are certain. A good deed, an action of body, speech, or mind that is motivated by a good motivation will lead to happiness and cannot lead to anything else. An ill deed, a bad deed, bad things, whatever you want to call it, which is any action of body, speech, or mind motivated by selfishness or malice will lead to suffering. And there's no way that it can do anything else. Not mistaking the results of actions means accepting that this is certain. You know, in extreme form, good deeds lead to higher rebirth and bad deeds lead to lower rebirth. But the point is, these things are, are definite. They're certain. There are no exceptions to this. And fourth, give up distractions if you want freedom from samsara, this pit of fire and nest of snakes. The purpose of the fourth contemplation is to inspire us to really desire freedom. The desire for freedom, which means the, the correct identification of happiness with freedom from samsara, uh, is real, the real starting point of the path. Unless we really want to be free from samsara, unless we really want to achieve that freedom, there is no authentic motivation for Dharma. And especially because of habit, we are so easily distracted. We are distracted by all sorts of impermanent and unimportant things. So if you, you want freedom from samsara, you have to give up distractions. And the only way to give up distractions, since we are we have a long-standing habit of allowing ourselves to be distracted by anything that happens to come before us rather than work to get free from samsara is to recognize what samsara is. The only way you want to become free from your usual state is by recognizing that your usual state is unsatisfactory. By recognizing that samsara is like a being thrown into a pit of fire or finding yourself in a nest of poisonous snakes. So that stanza principally describes, in a brief way, what are called the four thoughts that turn the mind with the common preliminaries. The next uh, stanza uh, deals with the attitude of going for refuge in the guru and using that attitude as a basis for purification and accumulation. The first line, your guru embodies all Buddhas of the three times. 
Your guru embodies all Buddhas of the three times because it is your guru who transmits to you the wisdom, the message, the teachings of all Buddhas of the three times. Since the primary activity of any Buddha is to teach and guide beings to liberation, and since it is your guru who performs that function in your life, your guru, for you, embodies all of them. Take refuge in him, therefore your guru embodies all sources of refuge, and purify obscurations through the power of his compassion. To gather great accumulations, the accumulations of merit and wisdom, unreservedly offer the mentally adopted, the imaginary, your three gates and all you possess. We are concerned with two parallel processes on the path. The one is purification, the purification of the veils which prevent us from seeing reality. These veils include the imprint of our previous wrongdoing, and so forth. The other side of, of the process is what we call accumulation. The accumulation or gathering of merit and wisdom. Typically, we uh, try to accumulate merit, especially by making offerings. But we need to understand uh, what the idea of offering, what the function of offering uh, is. First of all, the idea of offering um, is to give something unreservedly or without reservation. That means without hope of some kind of strategic advantage, payback, a repayment, uh, and so on. And then we come to the issue of what we offer. If you study Shantideva's Bodhicharavatara, uh, he explains in detail um, a different sorts of, of offerings. We often tend to define offerings too narrowly. We think that offerings are necessarily of physical things, that they consist of things that we might physically set up on the shrine or, or uh, other kinds of gifts. In fact, offerings are much more than that. Offerings include not only actually present things, but also mentally adopted things. Mentally adopted things, as Shantideva explains it, are things that really exist in the world, but that are uh, either not owned by anyone, or if owned, are in no way uh, misappropriated by your uh, offering them uh, in your imagination to the sources of refuge. You can offer beautiful mountains, beautiful flowers, skies, and all sorts of other things that you might see to the guru and the three jewels. And even though you don't own these things, you are free to mentally adopt them as offerings because what you're really offering is your perception of them. And that is yours to give. When you see a beautiful mountain or a beautiful flower, your offering it does not deprive anyone else of that mountain or flower, does not harm the environment in any way. You're offering, in fact, your perception of it, which is yours to give. So there are not only actually present, but also mentally adopted offerings, which is the offering of real things, but you're not physically uh, affecting them. A third type of offering is imaginary offerings, and these are things that don't exist, but that you can imagine, such as beautiful palaces and magnificent things. Anything, any wonderful and fine thing that you can imagine, you can offer to the guru and the three jewels. But when we come to the idea of offering your three gates and all you possess, we have to be very careful. Because there is um, some 
potential for uh, misunderstanding and, in fact, uh, misuse uh, of this uh, idea. In Tibetan Buddhism, you are taught that the guru is everything. And, and since guru is lama in Tibetan, that the lama, the lamas are everything. And, you know, anything you give to the lama, that's, that's wonderful. This quickly becomes give everything to the lama. Keep nothing for yourself. Indeed, here, in this, it seems to be saying that. All you possess. In order to accumulate merit, give your lama everything you have, keeping nothing for yourself. We naturally, at some point, are left with the impression these lamas are inexhaustibly greedy. <laughs> no matter how much we give them, you know, no matter how many fine cars they drive or gold watches they wear, they never have enough. They always ask us for more. Well, there's only one way to do it. I must keep on giving my lama or my lamas everything I have until I have nothing. That's one misapprehension. And another misapprehension is this business of accumulating merit is extremely expensive. <laughs> I can't afford it. Only rich people can afford to accumulate merit because they can give lots of financial support and lots of fancy stuff. Well, these are both, um, in fact, the complete opposite of what is intended here. No one's to blame for misunderstanding them because it literally says, give your three gates, your body, speech, and mind, and all you possess. It doesn't mean that you have to actually make a show of giving everything you have uh, to your lamas until you have nothing left. The point here of offering your body, speech, and mind and all you possess means not that you have to give everything, nor that you have to be wealthy to accumulate merit. It means the exact opposite. It means that regardless of the particulars of your situation, we never lack the means to accumulate merit. There is always a way, in fact, many ways, for us to gather the accumulations. For example, when we generate bodhicitta, it's said in the sutras that one instant of bodhicitta accumulates so much merit that if it had physical form, it would be larger than the entire universe. Now, bodhicitta, the generation of bodhicitta, we think of that as a practice or as training or as development, not as an offering. But that, in fact, is exactly what real offerings are. If people have the resources to materially support, you know, clergy, that's fine. But offerings are much, much more than that. For example, it says, offer your three gates. That does not mean offer yourself in servitude to the Lama. It does not mean let the Lama boss you around endlessly. <laughs> it means... <laughs> it means that you have a body, speech, and mind. You have endless resources within those three parts of you to accumulate merit. When you perform prostrations, that is an offering of the body. When you recite prayers, that is an offering of speech. When you feel faith, feel devotion, that is an offering of mind.
So the idea of offering, which is a type of giving, is really about your attitude. It is far more important why you give than it is what you give. For example, if you have nothing material to give but your faith and devotion, you haven't actually given anything in the conventional sense of the term, but you will accumulate tremendous merit and receive the blessing of your gurus. If someone were to give their lama billions of dollars without faith, they would accumulate far less merit than someone who gave their lama one dollar or less with faith. So, in short, this business of the accumulation of merit and offering and giving your body, speech, and mind and all you possess is not some kind of mercantile exchange. You are not selling yourself into servitude here. And you are not your lama's indentured servant. It means using every resource at your disposal to gather the accumulation uh, of merit. Go some long job the year party. Laman the person get the carriers and a telepet, top chabard the power is. Top chabard the power carriers and a dancing singente, hung around the one, eh, eh, can call one and come out the top and double the radio is. That the bath, dug in the bath, dang a chabardi, some mingala do get a manual. Mayoata, Tangarangi, Panjol Tangarang, Court, and the Tatagoi, Telegic, the Conadubori, Menu, some begin to hit it, and one at Tanig and call the Tapig, Tapanda were the orders. Then the Lutha Longo, Dova the Chia, but the Pangs and get the Connor Senna, Dangzinte, so so the Meba Zone, Dangzin take a Jota Chia by Yonsu over Tamje de Pangne. Dametting on the Kirk Tower of Song Yoris. They in the Cubs on the Taya, Chu Ching the Sam of Tana, Ta on Garden Garden Sam on Day Horis. Oh, that morning on Sam Gomja at the Hirag Lela Wondo, that they can't have an understanding of some good in the Yoris, Sam Nagent in Lake Gonzala. Move you good Koran Kaze on a Pumagoche to Nikora. Sam Janja could turn the Pujan and Dixander with some kind of order, taking on a son of Gusso Sagmaris. Dance the Pan Togumaris, that and Zimbeg Panjo did dance his own Pesaji Kella, you Malo Chene, that dame you talk with Senna, Tom Marivas. Takwa the Chi, Mago Chene, then Firi Chen at the Koran Takwa Mogoli Chen and Rose and Dry of Mariba, that's the end of the race. Then it went up for one of you and taken those. Well, if that's true, what is, why does it say, give your three gates and all you possess? Think about what uh, keeps us in samsara. What keeps us in samsara is uh, self-fixation. Now, when we say self-fixation, it's very easy to talk about it. We don't feel much of a pinch because it sounds very cognitive. But what it really means is selfishness. We can look at it as a cognitive state in which we mistake reality to be the existence of a self. But it's equally an, an affect, and that affect is one we know very well, which is selfishness. Selfishness is what binds us to samsara. And it's the one thing that we're never willing to give up. We can deprive ourselves of all sorts of things and be very, very proud of doing so. But we never give up our selfishness. Fundamentally, our selfishness is the belief, I am the most important being 
in the entire universe. We really believe that. We're not to blame for believing that because, you know, we are at the center of our universe. Everything we experience is from the perspective of ourselves. So we think, I am the most important being. I am actually the greatest being. We may pay lip service to the acknowledgement of the superiority of others in a limited sense, but in fact we don't really believe it because deep down we experience a universe with us at the center and we therefore fundamentally feel whatever we may tell ourselves we believe, we fundamentally feel I am the greatest thing in the universe. So everything we do we do in order to um, serve ourselves. And our stuff, the things we own, the things with which we identify, so the people we call us as opposed to them, are all just uh, appurtenances of accessories to the self. So basically, we are concerned with the gratification and protection of I and mine. My stuff, my friends, my people, my city, whatever it is. The problem is that as long as we don't give that up, we are not progressing on the path and we will not achieve liberation. Anything we do spiritually that allows us to avoid impinging on our selfishness uh, is beside the point and will be ineffective. The recognition of selflessness, the recognition of the non-existence of the self, is uh, the state of liberation from samsara. But that recognition cannot occur as long as we seek to protect this self, even though it never existed, as long as we keep on trying to protect it, we'll never see that. Now, we might, having corrected a naive, Rimshay said, having corrected a naive misunderstanding of what it means to uh, give one's body, speech, and mind, and all one possesses to the guru. We also need to recognize the potential for an opposite abuse or misunderstanding of this, which is that having said that you can accumulate merit by generating bodhicitta and so forth without actually giving anything, we might use that as an excuse to further preserve our selfishness by thinking, well, in that case, I'll just meditate and uh, I'll be very, I'll be very careful to make no contributions and, and to do nothing other than just meditate. If I can accumulate merit that way, why should I give them a buck? I mean, I'll save my money and, you know, not, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get off free. Well, the problem with that is not that there's no financial contribution. The problem with that is that the person is turning their meditation into a way to avoid the pinch of reducing their, their own selfishness. And we cannot realize selflessness as long as we remain devoted to our own selfishness. So we'll stop here for this morning and conclude with the dedication and aspirations. Please turn to page 11 of the Yellow Book. Glorious, holy, venerable, precious, kind root and lineage lamas, divine assembly of yidams and assemblies of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, yogins, yoginis, and akinis, dwelling in the ten directions, please hear my prayer. By the power of this vast root of virtue, may I benefit all beings through my body, speech, and mind. May the afflictions of desire, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and jealousy not arise in my mind. 
May thoughts of fame, reputation, wealth, honor, and concern for this life not arise for even a moment. May my mind stream be moistened by loving kindness, compassion, and bodhicitta. And through that, may I become a spiritual master with good qualities equal to the infinity of space. May I gain the supreme attainment of Mahamudra in this very life. May the torment of suffering not arise even at the time of my death. May I not die with negative thoughts. May I not die confused by wrong view. May I not experience an untimely death. May I die joyfully and happily in the great luminosity of the mind as such and the pervading clarity of dharmata. May I, in any case, gain the supreme attainment of Mahavmudra at the time of death or in the bardom.